Hey guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell here and welcome to another edition of WWE It's a New Day where we try and correct the, the wrongs of um, the WWE in real life which is quite a lot um, I'm recording this the day after Raw uh, the first Raw of the year and I'll be honest, I watched the first hour and then tapped out uh, so it's a great start to the year um, judging by what's happened after it uh, we, they could build so many stars but they're going to make Roman look strong at the expense of pretty much the whole roster so thankfully you don't get that here, we'll try to build as many stars as possible uh, just to usher in a complete new era in the WWE with of course a lot of talents coming from NXT as well and a couple of the guys that aren't getting a fair sniff, sniff in real life will hopefully push as time goes on so we're booking this show from Long Beach in the South, the Long Beach Arena, sorry, in the Southwest. We're just really hoping to get a good show as we're only this week and next week away from the Royal Rumble. And then, of course, Fastlane, that irrelevant pay per view, and then WrestleMania. And I'm really hoping we can get a good WrestleMania. But, less than me blather on, let's kick on with the show. Hope you enjoy it. So, we've got 11,960 in attendance, that's not too bad. We start off in a bout that had some solid in action, but not much in the way of heat. Xavier Woods defeats Yvonne Dudley in 5 minutes and 43 by pinfall with a hammerlock DDT. A D plus 48, not a bad show in there for these guys, trying to put Xavier over to be more of a threat with the new day. Kofi did some good work at ringside, no skill improvements, and overall, just try to get that consistency and a bit of momentum behind Xavier Woods so we can push him. Next up in the pre-show, between the jobbers, I'm keeping them as jobbers at the now, so I'm not sure when I'm going to push them, but we'll eventually change uh, Gable and Jordan. For an extremely short match, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan defeated Aiden English and Solomon Crow. In 348, when Jason Jordan defeated Aiden English by pinfall. This was an F plus 12. Just really putting good workers with uh, Jordan and Gable to try and get them as over as possible before we start using them on a regular basis. No skill improvements on this occasion though, uh, lots of negatives. We'll probably change the push this say neither the full screen or main roster debuts. Next up in a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat. Hideo Watame defeated Goldust in 8.54 by submission. C-56, that's good there, building up some momentum for Hideo. Goldust has improved his performance skills for this match was really just to benefit Hideo Watame. And then this was the fifth, uh, fourth or fifth time this was done, so it was going to struggle. I really just wanted to give Finn Balor another victory. The match that had some good action and average heat. Finn Balor defeats Dolph Ziggler in 10 minutes and 32 by pinfall with a brain buster. E47. It wasn't as good as their recent matches, which is a shame. But both men improved their performance skills. And to be honest, it was on the pre-show anyway, so I don't think it will do too much damage to them. And our final match in the pre-show, and a match that had some good action and average heat, Randy Orton defeated Braun Strowman in 7.54 by count-out. C62, just an experienced man to put with Braun to just really see if he can learn some skills. Unfortunately, he was off his game. Randy Orton stood out to be good. Braun's improved his technical skills, so we've got a little bit of skill gain there. And in terms of the dirt sheet, mostly for Braun Strowman. But hopefully working with these kind of guys in pre-shows, May help his character and it's protected booking with the counter defeat. Now on for the actual show. So we start the show off with the COO of the WWE, Triple H, who is in the ring with a table and two chairs. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just two weeks away from the Royal Rumble and our next big WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. So the COO of this company, it's time to sign it off and make it official. So let me introduce to you the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Dean Ambrose. Ambrose heads to the ring, looking fairly confident. Thank you for coming, Dean. And now next being led to the ring by his agent, Paul Heyman, the beast incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Heyman pops out the curtain first, followed by the beast, Brock Lesnar. They both head to the ring, looking extremely confident. Paul, Brock, thank you for coming as well. First off, if you could please sign the contract and confirm the match. And also it includes that after this signing, there will be no physical contact between both men before the Royal Rumble. Both men sign the contract. So the B-74, 
Uh, Ambrose performed poorly, that's disappointing. He's also got a dreadfully stale character, so we'll look to change that. There was hints at a Paul Heyman heel turn, but obviously it's still recent, and the title storyline has advanced in this segment. No skill improvements, and the dirt sheet has mostly Dean Ambrose negatives, but hopefully, you know, once we change his gimmick, all of them disappear and we get a much better segment for Dean Ambrose. With the contract signed, Paul Heyman picks up the microphone. The lunatic fringe Dean Ambrose. Lunatic. What a fitting nickname that is. Because that's exactly what you are if you're even thinking of getting in the ring with this man, this beast, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar has one objective, to inflict pain. And once he does that, he will beat you down and you cannot get back, until you cannot get back up. And then he will easily take back what is rightly his, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And Mr. Ambrose, there is nothing you can do about it. So bring everything you've got because Brock Lesnar will enter the Ambrose Asylum and Brock Lesnar will smash it down. Solid B-75. B this sends up Paul Heyman heel turn again, just getting more segments for that. No worker improvements. Uh, just done to a cold crowd is the only negative. So overall, a pretty good promo from Paul Heyman. Dean Ambrose then takes the mic and it's a horrible promo. Dean Ambrose looks at Heyman and Lesnar with a confused expression on his face. Really Heyman? Really? You think I'm scared of this big buffoon? This guy is beatable? Yeah bro, I said it. You're beatable. And I want to stamp my ticket to Wrestlemania. And I'll do anything, and I mean anything, to make sure next Sunday I kick your ass and retain my title. So good luck, believe your hype, and enjoy your tune-up matches. Because nothing, and again I mean nothing, can prepare you for entering the Ambrose Asylum. Pretty disappointed that's a D plus 52, although I do think a lot of that is to his character. Uh, once we get the Dean Ambrose character sorted. Guess his gimmick got out of the way, then hopefully we can get better ratings down the line because that's really poor and normally promos are his strong point. The title storyline advances though, no skill improvements, dirt sheet, all negatives there, right, so we'd better change that shortly. We then have a quick highlight package of last week's WWE Intercontinental Championship match between the returning Rob Van Dam and Kevin Owens before they do battle in tonight's tag team contest. This is a C plus 66, small hype video. No improvements, nothing really there, just hyping up that match coming up, which is next. And a match that had some good action and average cheat. Rob Van Dam and Alberto Del Rio defeated Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins in 10.05 when Kevin Owens was counted out. They'll fight an RVD. C64, it continues the hell do you think you are storyline. I'm thinking I'm going to give them another rematch between Del Rio and Rollins. Overall. Lots of negatives there, maybe need to fix the Seth Rollins character as well. God, so many poor gimmicks, it's disappointing. Next up in a bit, they had some solid in-ring action, but non-existent crowd heat. Emma, Sasha Banks, Paige and Naomi defeated Asuka, Becky Lynch, Charlotte and Natalia. In 10-21 when Sasha Banks defeated Natalia by pinfall, well we'll battle Bulldog. Basically just putting over as much as possible Sasha Banks. D45 is pretty decent. Lots of things here. Tamina doing good work at ringside despite the lack of chemistry between her and Naomi. Diva storyline continues because they're pretty much all thrown in there. Becky improves her performance skills and Sasha her rumble skills. And there's going to be a lot of negatives, but there's quite a few positives as well, so we'll build this Diva's division up. I tried to integrate it, but it says it was changing the product too much and I don't feel that's a risk I can take right now. So down the line, we definitely will. They have a hype video to promote the fact that Lana and Rusev are back together and basically documenting Rusev's run of dominating victory, victories as we head towards the Royal Rumble. Just a D41 because we're having to build the Lana character back up. Her match had some good action and average heat. Rusev defeated Neville in 754 by pinfall for Bullplex. C7, uh, C57, nothing really to improve there apart from the fact it gets Rusev over. Next up in a match that had some good action and average cheat, Bad News Barrett defeated Robert Roode in 8.23 by pinfall after using a foreign object. During the match we also had Sheamus come in and attack Barrett, that's meant to be attack Robert Roode. C58, so that's my bad. Tag storyline has advanced, Roode improving performance skills, Barrett 
improving rumble and the dirt sheet, not as many negatives there mostly holding back, poor gimmick the length of the match, obviously time restraints because it's only 2 hours and being done to a cold crowd but overall, because Rude is kind of more a main eventer we are hoping to try and build Barrett off the back of him and maybe Sheamus, if he's lucky Barrett then picks up the win and quickly leaves the ring before James Thorum can enter it to even up the odds Barrett and Sheamus scamper to the ramp where they start laughing back at the tag team champions. B-75, very happy with that. No skill improvements there, but it's just shown that the heels have gotten one up on the baby faces in this instance. Next up, the White family are in the ring for a match with John Cena, and apparently John Cena has a surprise for them. Bray, Wyatt and Luke Harper will represent the White family, but who will join John Cena? Cena takes the mic and says, well, the last month... You've made nothing but a nightmare for me. And I know over the months you've made a nightmare for many others. However, one man wants to make his return. One man seeks vengeance. In fact, did I say man? I meant demon. Joining aside me is none other than the, de the devil's favourite demon, Kane. So Kane is back. Kane is going to side with John Cena to take on the Wyatt family. If you remember way back at Survivor Series, they took out Kane, they took out The Undertaker, and Kane is seeking some retribution. C plus 69 is okay. Cena improvised well, as did Kane. No skill improvements. Few negatives there. Match itself was really poor, disappointingly, and a match that had some good action and average heat. Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper defeated John Cena and Kane in 10:25, and Bray Wyatt defeated Kane by pinfall. A standing sent on Splash following interference from the returning Eric Rowan. So, disappointing matchup, but uh, Nikki's storyline has advanced. No skill improvements and the dirt sheet. Could have been a lot better. I really want to build up the Wyatt family, um, all four members. Because out of nowhere, Eric Rowan has returned, and by the looks of it, he has rejoined the Wyatt family. They are now ambushing Kane and John Cena. Wyatt, Rowan, Strowman and Harper are just a destructive force. Wyatt and Strowman are taking care of Cena, beating him down while Harper and Rowan attack Kane. How will, how will Cena ever save Nikki Bella? That is the question. Disappointing D plus 49 because we still need to build a lot of the Wyatt family up. John Cena and Bray Wyatt came across well. Braun is underwhelming, but again we can build him up. And the Where's Nikki storyline has advanced. No skill improvements. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a long time to build these guys up. You know, we've only been working with them for two months and nothing's going to happen overnight. But we really need to get them over because I've got big rumble uh, mania plans for them, sorry. Our co main event in a match that had some good action and average heat Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns defeat The New Day, Kofi Kingston and Big E in 1204 when Roman Reigns defeated Kofi Kingston by pinfall. C plus 68, that's okay. Xavier Woods did some good work at ringside. Reigns improves technical and performance skills. Dean Ambrose flying and Kofi Kingston technical. So that's a pretty good result there in terms of improving our workers. Quite a few negatives, but again, once we get the Ambrose character sorted, uh, hopefully we'll be okay. I'm probably sort out in SmackDown so we won't actually see the changing of his gimmick because, uh, as I said, I'll make sure that happens in SmackDown and we'll see that that's fine. But obviously, I don't record SmackDown. Because it's just filler. And Joey Mercury's given us a lot of bad advice, that's cool. In our main event, and about that featured great action and a good crowd, Brock Lesnar defeats Cesaro in 1306 by pinfall. With an F5, following a distraction from Cesaro's US title opponent, Finn Balor. B-76, that's okay. Better than Lesnar's last match with Swagger. Eamon did some good work at ringside. Again hinting at that heel turn, the US title storyline continues, so that gets a good boost. Lesnar improving performance skills, uh, quite a few negatives there, but nothing overly concerning, I'm quite happy with that, and that puts Brock with a bit of momentum before the pay-per-view. What a battle between Cesaro and Lesnar. Paul Heyman picks up the mic and cuts a quick promo to end the show. I hope you're watching that, Mr. Ambrose, because in two weeks, that title belongs to Brock Lesnar. TikTok. TikTok. A B78 hints again at the heel turn. This title storyline advances. No skill improvements. And the show gets a B-74, so just under where we need it to be. So we're going to lose pop in the US and Canada. 
but we've successfully gained pop everywhere else. Not the best show in the world, as I say, a lot of folk we still need to build up. Um, but really interesting the fact that Seamus and Barrett, for entertainment angles, can get as good a rating as our main eventers. So I'm maybe going to push maybe the White family earlier on in the show and use other guys later on in the show. But uh, no, it's cool. I'm trying to build up so many stars at once instead of uh, WWE's logic uh, of building up just Roman. So we're going to take a few hits because so many people are getting booked in a certain way. But that's cool. As long as I don't fall even lower, I'll be quite happy. Uh, let's see, superstars didn't get in particularly well. Raw, they enjoyed it, so that's not bad. Um, emails, let's see, we got a 2.44, a 4.38 on the USB network, so not too bad there. Not going to click my decisions in case it's a spoiler. So, size wise, 67s were too above national. Hopefully, we don't fall even lower, which would be disappointing. Uh, as I say, I'm going to keep at it. You know what I mean? It's, it's all about building stars up. Once we've got a lot of stars on this mod, it'll be easy, but the start is always going to be hard, hard because uh, Flash makes these mods really difficult. But as to the challenge, I'm more than happy with it. Uh, it's more about telling the stories than, than getting the ratings. Got plenty of money as well in the bank if need be. So, thank you for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. I've got one quick question for you. With WrestleMania coming up in two months' time, I want to try and plan ahead how I'm going to book other matches. Is there any legends you would like me to try and bring in that are maybe on hiatus, any former wrestler? Let me know in the comments section below, uh, and I'll see if I can get many of those guys booked in for Mania as possible. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support, and um, just remember, as bad as WWE is getting, us TW bookers will try and provide you with an alternative. But thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.